Hey there, good morning everybody. It is the 25th of January 2021 and we are back in the book of Psalms. Can't believe it's 10 o'clock already. The mornings fly by when you're having fun. We left off yesterday with Psalm 57, so it stands to reason we'd pick it up with Psalm 58 today. We're going to be a little ambitious. We're going to try to cover 58, 59, and 60. I like to end things on nice uh, even numbers or places that make sense, like on the fives. When I change the, ch uh, the volume on the television, I need it to be at 15 or 20. I don't want it at 16 or 18. That's weird. You should be locked up for that kind of mentality. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. But 58, 59, and 60, all three Psalms written by David. We're going to pray. We'll give you a quick synopsis of the backstory of the psalm, and then we'll work our way through it. So will you pray with me? Father, we love you, and we're thankful again for another Monday. Uh, thank you for Mondays. Thank you for another day to live, to enjoy what you've given us, to serve you, to seek to fulfill our potential. I pray today as we start our day with the Word of God that you'd help us to learn and grow from it, maybe be reminded of some things. Help us today, please, through it. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Okay, so Psalm 58 is David's declaration for his desire of justice. Justice is a big deal. Uh, God is a just God. He is a God that seeks justice and that will eventually bring justice. Now, justice is twofold. We usually think of it in the crime and punishment sense, but it's also justice for righteousness and rewards. So let's say a person steals a candy bar from a store. You're not going to put him to death for that theft. Uh, you're probably not even going to imprison him. You may just make him pay for the candy bar. If, however, someone maliciously takes another human life with intent, well, that's another matter. You're not just going to make him pay a $100 fine. You're going to either put him in prison for life or maybe even capital punishment. The punishment and the crime need to balance each other out. If you remember the statue of justice, uh, she is a lady with a blindfold on, meaning that the law will be the deciding factor and not personal preference or priority or uh, likable personalities, that type of thing. And then she has the old fashioned scale with the upright bar, the horizontal bar, and then the two plates hanging from chains there. You put weights on one side and goods on the other, and you want those to balance out. So when it comes to crime and punishment, you want those things to balance out. Likewise, righteousness and reward. So let's say that uh, somebody returns a wallet to the police department and it was full of cash. Let's say it had $100 in cash in it. And so the person that lost it comes and claims it and then says, you know what, I want to leave $20 to the person who returned the wallet. That'd be a fair uh, return. I'd say even maybe as little as $10, but at most... $30, right? You wouldn't give them the whole $100. Say, hey, thanks for bringing it back to me. Here's the whole $100. Uh, nor would you just give them a, a dollar back. You, you, you know, you want to let it balance out. And so to the degree that we uh, live righteously and sacrifice for the Lord, he will reward us justly. So Psalm 58 is David looking for ju justice, and he wants just judges. Judges that make their decisions based on the rule of law and not their own personal inclinations. So, verse number one, Psalm 58. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming ever, never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. <laughs> That's harsh, isn't it? Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, 
let them be as cut in pieces. As a sm uh, snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. Like the untimely birth of a woman, that'd be a miscarriage, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. And so it's an interesting circle here that David has just brought us through in these 11 verses. He's complaining about the injustice that man brings upon one another. And then he wraps it up by saying, and then after God judges those who've been unjust, he will be revealed as the just judge. And so truly the only uh, just one in all of the universe is God himself. We all have preferences and prejudices and and personal uh, favorites uh, regarding things and we'll, we'll color something a certain way uh, when we're describing it or, or viewing it or considering it. Our perspectives are based on our experiences. And so none of us as humans are truly just. We ought to seek to do our best, but even then we're going to be flawed. And God will take, however, those who are intentionally unjust and he will hold them accountable for the injustices that they reach. Now, you, you, I've, I've heard stories of, of judges. I've heard stories of attorneys, of prosecutors, of police, uh, the majority of whom, I like to believe, are doing a good job and want justice themselves. But we've all seen that 2020 episode or that Dateline NBC uh, or the documentary that shows foul play going on, that shows personal uh, prejudices or, or personality issues. And so true justice isn't brought about. And God says, you know what? Those judges, those unjust judges will be dealt with by me. All right. That's justice. And David, I'm told, was a little bit younger when he wrote that. So it's pretty stern and rigid, isn't it? Psalm 59. So uh, here my Bible says at the top, a plea for deliverance from enemies to the musician, uh, a, uh, that guy, <laughs> Mick Tam of David, when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him. So there was a time when David or when Saul sent some of his men to David's house and they were staking it out like a police stakeout. And they're watching the house of David to kill him when he showed his face. Well, Michael, David's wife, knows that this is going on. And uh, interestingly enough, she's the, the daughter of Saul. So here her dad is trying to kill her husband. And so she warns David and says, hey, my dad's got some guys outside. You better be careful. And so they plot this uh, plan. They, they replace David's body in his bed with a dummy and they put goat's hair on it. And he slips out the window to get away and hide. And so Saul, you know, when he hears that David is sick, he says, you know what, go in there and take him in the bed, just kill him. And so they go in and they find out it's not David at all. It's a dummy with goat's hair and David's already escaped. So that's the backstory here of Psalm 59. And so it's, it's a Psalm of once again, God delivering David from harm at the hand of Saul. Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity, and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, not for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors, Selah. They return at evening, they make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for who, say they, doth hear? 
And so he's describing the scene here, that his enemies are, are surrounding his house, that they're lying in wait. They just want him to show up so that they can attack him. And he said, Lord, I've not even done anything wrong. I don't know why these people are after me trying to kill me. I've just tried to serve my king the best I can. The problem is the people favored and preferred David over Saul, and that made him bitter against David. Verse number eight, but thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and for cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath, consume them, that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. And at evening let them return, and let them make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. And so the second half of the psalm, David first declared that the people were after him, that they're roaming the cities like dogs. And then he says in the second half, but Lord, you will deliver me from this. You will laugh at them. You will have them in derision. And then he asks him, don't kill them. Just scatter them and take their power from them. And he says, lest my people forget. Slay them not, lest my people forget. You know, once somebody is dead and gone, they are easily and quickly forgotten very often. And maybe the people that are closest to them in their lives, they are going to remember on occasion and with fondness. But by and large, those who've committed atrocities, those who've been unjust, those who have sought to harm their political enemies, they're just forgotten. And what happens when we forget history, it will then repeat itself. And we go through the same pains and struggles that we could have avoided had we remembered. And so David is saying, don't kill them, Lord. Just scatter them and take their power. I still want them roaming around like dogs, but like hungry dogs, hungry dogs that can't find anything to eat. I want them to, to be wandering around like pesky dogs that nobody wants around. And so pretty interesting psalm there to read about that attack on David. All right, finally, Psalm 60. Uh, this psalm here is, well, I'll, I'll read you my little uh, intro in my Bible, a plea for God's presence to the chief musician upon Shushan, Edith, Miktam of David to teach when he strove with Aram, Nearam, and with Aram, Zobah, when Joab returned and smote of Edom in the Valley of Salt, 12,000. So we're at the mature stage of David's reign here chronologically. David was anointed with oil to be the king of Israel three different times. The first time was when Samuel showed up at his father's house, Jesse, looking for the next king, and Jesse didn't even think to bring David in for consideration. But when God tells Samuel that none of Jesse's other sons are to be king, he asks, do you have any more sons? Because I know I'm at the right place. And Samuel says, well, or Jesse says, I got one more kid, but he's just a lad out watching the sheep. He says, bring him to me. And when David shows up, Samuel's told by God that he's the king. And David is anointed to be the next king of Israel. Then later on, years pass, David is anointed to be king over part of Judah. And then finally, once the kingdom uh, is, is together completely, uh, he is anointed the king over all Israel. So three times was David anointed, and it said after that third time, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And this is a reminder that God's people continually need to seek the power of God on their lives. Verse number one, O God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, 
thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble, thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth, Selah, that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and hear me. God hath spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, which hadst cast us off, and thou, O God, which didst not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. And so we see this full spectrum of God's involvement in the life of Israel. They start out feeling cast off and not helped by God because of disobedience and wickedness in the ranks. Eventually, they recognize their condition. They repent and confess. They get right. They seek the favor of God. God shows up and he establishes them as a strong kingdom. And overall, the reign of David, king of Israel, is a positive one, one that's looked back on with favor. He's not a perfect man. He certainly made some mistakes and some big ones at that. But overall, God has been with him. God has seen him through it. All right, that's our study for today. Only 17 minutes there. I thought we'd be here a little longer. There weren't a lot of things to pull out of the Psalms individually. Once we had the background and we read through them, we get a good understanding of it. Tomorrow morning, back in our places, 10 o'clock. Hope you have a great Monday today. Enjoy it. Do right. Honor the Lord. Seek his face today. And uh, we'll see you again here tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel, right? 61 is where we'll pick it up from. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, love, share the post. God bless you.